Hi, everyone. My name is Sachin. Uh, I am the co-founder of Accelerate AI. We have started Accelerate AI with a mission and vision to transform the way data science education is currently imparted in the industry. Today, we'll talk about a very uh, simple topic about business analytics and what business analytics is. A lot of people still get confused about many of these terms, so I'll try to um, talk a little bit about it and demystify this process. So let me share my screen and we'll get started. So my, uh, you know, I'll cover the following things. We'll talk about what business analytics is. We'll look at different definitions of business analytics. Then we'll talk about the different types of analytics that are defined in literature. Then we'll talk about where analytics is used in the industry. Um, also, there could be cases where analytics is not very, very practical. So we'll look at some cases some uh, where business analytics may not be very practical. So let's get into it. What is business analytics? Um, so there is a lot of confusion about this term. You know, people have coined different terms uh, around analytics. Let's try to understand, the, you know, how I see business analytics as. So if you look at some of the formal definitions of business analytics, Merriam-Webster dictionary uh, defines it as method of logical analysis. Right. So you're applying a, a logic. You're trying to analyze something. That's analytics. Uh, but I don't think you know that's a very good definition. Oxford Dictionary takes it a little bit further. It says business analytics is systematic computational analysis of data or statistics. Um, so it specifically touches about around data. Uh, it says we use statistics and it says we use computational analysis. Wikipedia tries to elaborate that a little bit uh, and also try to kind of generalizes the whole definition, right? So it says analytics is the discovery, interpretation, and communication of meaningful patterns in the data, right? So data is central here. It is touching upon that, but it is also saying it's not just about you, but it is also about interpreting and then communicating it to your stakeholders, right? So that's quite good. Uh, however, in all of these definitions, I feel that, you know, something is still lacking. Uh, the definition that I find the most uh, useful is a definition that was given by Thomas Davenport. He's a professor of business analytics, and he has written many books on business analytics. One of the early books that he wrote was Analytics at Work, Smarter Decisions, Better Results. In there, he defines analytics as, as the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, explanatory and predictive models, and fact-based management, to drive decisions and actions, right? So there is stress on data. There is stress on all these different methods, including predictive uh, modeling. But the final thing which he emphasizes is all of this is to drive business decisions and actions um, in the business, right? So I like this definition the best. Um, so as we saw, analytics is not just about data. It is not about just the statistics and quantitative methods. Um, also, it is not just about technology. Technology plays a very important role in analytics, but there's something much beyond that. Um, so analytics is about bridging the gaps between business and the data scientist. Business analytics helps us to understand the different answers that we ask the data in our business, right? And then eventually, by asking those questions and getting answers to those questions, uh, we hope to make better decisions. So business analytics is a combination of the science of data analysis using statistics, quantitative methods, predictive modeling, and so on, as well as the art of sound reasoning and the business experience and you know sometimes the gut feel and the art of asking good questions and so on. So you combine these two um, in order to get better outcomes. Uh, in the literature, people divide analytics into four different types of analytics, and often this could be confusing, you know, where the boundary lies. The way I try to understand this is in terms of the type of question, the question that we are asking the data, right? So if we ask a question as to what happened in my business, right? So the focus is on past. Uh, we have gathered data, and then we are trying to understand what happened last week, last month, last quarter. Uh, maybe I have a business where I run and, you know, I sell something. I want to look at the overall sales of my product. 
by different product line, by different regions and so on. That is that type of an analytics is called descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics is only possible if we have accurate, timely and comprehensive data. The tools that we use in descriptive analytics are exploratory data analysis and effective visualization. These two really help us in one, understanding the data and what it is saying, as well as communicating it well to different business stakeholders. The next question we can ask is if there is an issue in certain you know, parts or pockets of the business, we try to understand why did it happen? Um, so here we are trying to drill down and understand the reasons for why something happened in the past. We do root cause analysis and so on. Uh, and it need not necessarily always be in a negative context, but let's say, you know, our sales jumped by 50% uh, in the last quarter. We might want to understand what is those good things that we did, right? Was it some kind of marketing campaign, some promotions, discounts that we gave? Was our product really liked by the customers? What was it that caused this? Uh, so this kind of analytics is called diagnostic analysis, right? It's you're not just looking at the data and communicating, but you're also doing some kind of root cause analysis here. However, all of these you will see is in the past, right? Something that has happened. Uh, predictive analytics takes it a step further and it tries to answer the question, what is likely to happen in the future? given certain circumstances, right? Obviously, you know, there will be a lot of uncertainties, but we assume certain circumstances and then we try to <clears throat> uh, predict what would what is likely to happen. So in here, we are trying to identify historical patterns and relationships using statistics and algorithms. And then from that, the outcome is different rules that come out, we provide those rules, and then we try to automate certain decisions using technology. Uh, so predict analytics becomes more complex, but this is where the value also increases for the business. And then eventually the final frontier of analytics is what is known as prescriptive analytics, right? So the question we are asking here is, given many unknowns, what is the best course of action that we can take in order to maximize, let's say our revenue or our profit, or maybe you know, improve customer satisfaction and so on. Uh, so in prescriptive analytics, we are trying to recommend actions based on advanced mathematical modeling and simulation. We may employ uh, tools like Markov decision system or you know, things like linear programming or dynamic programming and so on. So a lot of operations research tools are used in prescriptive analytics in order to understand the best course of action. <clears throat> so we talked about what is analytics and what are the different types of analytics that could be done? Uh, let's try to understand where analytics is used today in the industry. Um, so most of the functions, as well as in most industries, analytics is very heavily used in the last maybe 15 to 20 years um, as technology has become you know, more efficient and cheaper and so on, right? So marketing, if we talk about uh, that, it was one of the earliest uh, business functions that started adopting analytics in a big way. Um, so we could answer questions like how much to price a product or where to open new stores or what offers to give to a particular type of customers, how much spend should be uh, provided to a particular advertising uh, channel and so on. Um, business analytics is, helps us in answering all these kind of questions. Supply chain also very heavily uses business analytics. Many companies in this area invest a lot into analytics and you know, their decision, business decisions are driven by that. Uh, so if you want to understand how much inventory to keep or where to place your distribution centers or route planning and so on, as we talked about, this helps us a lot. Uh, finance is also one of the very early adopters of analytics. It heavily uses quant and different algorithms. Uh, for revenue forecast, for understanding the drivers of financial performance, you know, one area where uh, it touches us a lot, lot is the investment decisions or lending decisions. So if I'm trying to get a credit card or certain, certain loan from a bank, uh, the bank will run some kind of analytics to get my credit score. And based on that, it then uh, decides whether to give a loan or not. Um, also, some of the unconventional areas where analytics is heavily used now is human resource, uh, where you know you want to understand what kind of people to hire, 
um, or who are at risk of leaving the organization, or how much to provide as compensation to different skill levels and so on, what kind of trainings will be beneficial. Um, in manufacturing now with industry 3.0 and now more and more companies moving to industry 4.0 where they are trying to automate the whole manufacturing process using different sensors and IoT devices and you know smart planning and so on. Um, analytics is heavily used. Um, analytics is used to monitor the equipment uh, of very expensive equipments in real time and then maybe predict failures of those and understand the replacement requirements. It helps us in inventory management and vendor selection and many, many different areas. Um, also, R&D is an area where analytics is used heavily, We're trying to understand what kind of product features will be liked by customers, uh, what kind of quality problems can occur in the future and so on. Analytics can help us under answer all these questions. And this is only a limited set, but you know there are many, many areas, in healthcare and um, many more areas where analytics is used. <laughs> now, analytics is a very helpful tool, right? You're trying to analyze the data and then maybe predict something. It's helpful for business planning. Could there be cases where analytics is not practical? So, so in my understanding, there are a few areas where analytics may not be practical. One of the areas is when, let's say, there is very little time. So analytics requires gathering of data, analyzing that data, and then coming up with recommendations. All of this is time taking. You know, it requires investment in technology as well. When you do not have that much time and you are going to, you know, going with your gut feeling, then you know, probably analytics is not very practical, or maybe you do not have that much of uh, amount of money to invest. The other place where analytics may not be practical when like there's so no precedent. Um, so as an example, when the first iPod was launched, you know, there was no precedent of a product like this. Uh, so when companies are doing something for the first time, they may not be able to use any kind of analytics uh, to, let's say, you know, size the market and so on. Uh, the other area uh, where analytics is not practical is when the decision maker himself has a lot of experience um, and it could be a very niche area, right? So as an example, a rare disease which is being diagnosed, you know, an expert doctor might be very, very good at diagnosing the, that kind of a disease and the course of treatment versus analytics where there's very little data or the decision maker himself has much better experience uh, in doing so. Another area where analytics may be misleading and it's not practical to use is when historical data itself is misleading. Uh, one example of this was the pricing model or the home pricing models that were built in the US before 2008, where they were built on the premise that home prices will never decline. Uh, but after 2008, we saw that, you know, that is not always the ca case. Home prices can decline and there are many, you know, we saw that whole 2008 home pricing bubble that happened because of this kind of a issue. The fifth area where analytics is not practical is when you're not able to measure the variables uh, which impact my final outcome, right? One example, as we can see, is here finding a romantic pat partner. You know, you don't know what clicks and what doesn't click. So it, it usually may be very, very hard. Uh, people are trying to use psychometric tests in order to understand some of this, uh, but still, in my opinion, this is very, very hard uh, to do. Um, so in conclusion, as we saw, you know, analytics revolves around data. It is the systematic analysis of data. Uh, but the final uh, thing is good out, good decisions and you know actions that come out of the analytics, right? So that is very very important. Uh, and good data is paramount for business analytics. And along with that, technology, business context, and business knowledge, the art of asking good questions, as well as all the statistical analysis and machine learning and so on, combined gives you a good uh, outcome uh, using business analytics. So I hope that was useful. Uh, my name is Sachin Kumar and I am from Accelerate AI. Thank you for listening.